Welcome to another interesting video on understanding process flow entities. This is our part 2 in understanding task sequence process flow entities. We have already created part 1 of this video. If you haven't watched that video, do watch it. It is available on our channel for better understanding of part 2. So in this today's part 2, we are going to link this another task sequence to our forklift which is standing here ideally and what we are going to have is we are going to have two task sequences one which would be taken care by the operator one and another task sequence to be taken care by forklift so the material flow will be from q1 to q3 so without wasting much time let's begin Let us start linking this another task sequence which is the exact replica of our task sequence 1 which we created in part 1. So now what we are going to do is this source we are going to tell that on entry of the part 2 our Q2 we are going to have a token generated which will have a label named item. So we will have token.item generated at the source. The resource, we are going to assign this resource to transporter 1 that is our forklift and we are going to acquire that from this resource. Then we are going to go in a create task sequence. So we are go not going to change any of the property here because we are going to keep it default. Just a name is we are going to change. So this is create TS2 and this was our create TS1 in our part 1. So now what we are going to do is we are going to travel to the destination that is Q2. The executor is token.task sequence, it is same. We haven't changed a label here for our another task sequence. Then we are going to tell it to load from Q2. Token.item is already there, token.task assign is there. Then we are going to travel to our destination Q3. And then we are going to unload a part at Q3. So we have done that so we will make their q3 as the unloading station then we are going to tell that forklift to travel back to our q2 to lift another part and then we are going to finish the task sequence and we are going to release the last acquired resource now we are going to reset now we are also not going to have an error if you would have seen in part one we had an error that was because there were no entities assigned to our task sequence too so I'm just going to run this and hopefully this is going to start running. The moment the part is entered in Q2, our forklift is supposed to be arriving at this area for lifting. So I'll just zoom in, I'll just change an angle of view and you can look at our forklift is now coming for a lift. So it is going to lift the part, it is going to travel it is going to then unload at Q3 and then again it is going to travel back again. And once it is traveled, we are going to now lift and travel. So this is our another task sequence you could look at. It is just an exact replica of operator 1. The only change which we have made here is that the resource selected is different. Here we have selected operator for our task sequence 1 and here we have selected as forklift so once I make this faster you could see that the rate at which the parts are generated is faster than the rate at which it is getting transported so this we have taken an ideal or you can say just example but you can analyze that by looking at the flow of the material that the input is highest the output is at the low pace so this is about the task sequences uh, we had in this task sequence entities in the process flow. So we have understood create task sequence, finish task sequence, load, unload and travel of travel to object in our part 1. Now we are going to understand what is this that is travel to location. So let me reset this model. We'll just give you a view so you can look how 
efficient and how good looking the model looks like and this is the view of the process flow you can see the tokens 141 that is this much parts are available here and this is what green are the tokens and the red are the tokens for whom the resource is not available so only one resource is there therefore one part at a time so one part is allocated the particular resource so now let's uh, I'll just reset this and we'll bring travel to location here and we'll start understanding the properties we have in travel to location and most probably we will tell this operator to travel to some of the locations so let's understand the travel to location now so we have understood another task sequence so we will now understand so we already seen this travel to object here now we are going to look at the travel to location AGB travel we will learn in a featured program which we have so we'll learn this travel to location now so if you look at this travel to location what does it imply so basically it implies that based on our x y and z location we can specify any object to travel at that location okay that's what it mean here we are having one option that is relative to the task executor or irrelative to so you can check this in the properties it is nothing but just you need to specify what location that operator is supposed to travel x y and z respectively so what we will do is we will create one of the task sequence uh for this travel location so i'll tell that on entry here i need to have one of the token i label that token as same item and i'll assign that to the token and what we are going to do is i'll just disable this source here so that operator should not travel here and then i'm telling him to travel to the location say 10 of x and 20 of y let's see and then what we are going to do is we are going to use another thing that is delay so if you look at it uh, here is another property entity at task sequences which is delay so basically this delay is same as the delay we had in our basics if you have watched our video this is available on our channel for process flow basics it is same just like this but the additional thing which we can do here is we can state we can state a state so we can set a state for an operator or task executor so put a delay time so i'm putting it as say 20 seconds and we can set a state for that so the operator would be say i'm setting a state at bz you can set whatever is your business requirement you can set that state accordingly so i have set a delay i have set 20 seconds of delay and the state will be busy during my delay during my that delay state and now what i'm going to do is again i'm going to use this travel to location hopefully so we have this 10 20 hopefully i'll make this as minus 10 and minus 20 and then i'll put this in sync now what i need to do I need to acquire a resource because that operator needs to play so if the operator is going to play I'm going to link it to this resource then I'm going to make a release resource then I'm going to create a task sequence I'm going to add it after acquire sorry I'm going to add it after acquire I need to add it acquire kebab so I'll just bring it here then I'll take this here and I will finish the task sequence after before release so we have acquired task sequence is created to travel to delay to travel and then finish the task sequence release and sync it's and uh, we'll now just try we'll just reset and we will run this slowly hopefully this operator should move to that location and come back again so our operator has started moving so it is moving moving it is waiting so if you look at the state of that operator it's supposed to be busy and now our operator is traveling back so this is how it oh my goodness 
the operator has came here operator is moving so this is this is what is the process entity we have this is what it says that in the travel travel to location is this we have already used travel to object and this is travel to location and we have seen what is delay and what are the properties for the delay entities so this is all about uh, task sequences we'll look about custom task and dispatch task sequence in our upcoming next video that would be our part 3 hopefully and then we will complete this task sequence part for process flow entities so if you haven't subscribed to our channel do subscribe to our channel do like and share it with your friends stay healthy stay simulating we will meet in another video of part 3 till then take care bye bye